we just sort of set up our this is tweaking me out we just sort of set up our camp everything is all good i thought i'd come to these little stone buildings after some good intel from my man peaches um and i got my first lifer for the trip this is uh Aphrodia, Aphrodia Repestris, I think it is. Could be mistaken. Don't crucify me if I got the name wrong. But yeah, Repestris, I think it is. I have no idea what the English name is. Um, but you can see, this is a, definitely a flat gecko. Lacks any sort of nails on the on the feet. And um, yeah, it just has a typical flat gecko head shape. So pretty cool. Gonna get some photos of this guy and carry on. See what else can turn up. Cool, so you're just out here shining along rock walls, walking along the road, just shining for stuff. With Eugene Davin, just picked up this really nice, if you'll calm down, this is uh, Van Damme's dragon lizard. Really cool um, species of sort of a smog is the genus, as I'm sure most of the Harry Potter fans will know. But yeah, these guys are incredibly cool. Um, super stoked to get ha hands on this guy and take some photos of him. And then we'll just let him go back into his rock track. We still got quite a lot of shining to do, so I'll let you guys know if we find anything else. So we got our first snake of the night cruising on the rock cuts. Devin just spotted his life a stiletto snake, and this thing is going absolutely berserk. I'll try to get a decent look at him if you will chill. Um, but yeah, these guys, you can see how they move in these short jerky movements, and they just super erratic let's see if we can't get a you just get him to chill out but i don't think we will you can see they've got a really short sort of blunted tail and yeah they arch their sort of necks like that well which i'll be going to put them in a bag quickly and then we're gonna carry on because the snakes are obviously out and about I just flipped this little rock and I saw yellow and brown stripes. I thought it was a Western stripe early sand snake, but it's an absolute unit of a yellow throated plated lizard. Check out this guy. He actually doesn't have any sort of yellow or orange on his throat at all, which is a bit strange. But yeah, I mean, this guy is absolutely huge. He's probably a good, probably a well over 30 centimeters from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail. I mean, have a look at this guy, they're awesome. But yeah, gonna grab some photographs as always. I keep saying that, but it's what we do. Just let him go. Cool, sir. Devin just spotted this. This. Very good wolf snake. In that crack, after I was looking in there, like a minute earlier, I had a Turner's gecko, which is complete and another trash. Um, but yeah, this is a very good wolf snake, and this is one of our major targets for tonight the weekend the next couple of days probably my entire year so if this guy will chill yeah that's flipping awesome we're of course gonna try get some photographs that don't suck um and yeah we'll have a better look at him a little bit later. so now that i've calmed down to a somewhat of a mild panic um yeah, here's a look at this very little wolf snake that Davin just spotted in a rock crack that I have been looking in for geckos. Um, you can see it's got this super broad, sort of depressed head that use, it uses to sort of fit in between the rock cracks and where it hunts for sort of sleeping lizards, um, little geckos and other sorts of small reptiles. Um, yeah, they're pretty common and abundant in the area, but I'm still yeah, absolutely stoked to see this guy. And just to give you a better idea of the actual size of the snake, this is pretty much an average size one. They don't get a heck of a lot bigger than this. So Damon just spotted this awesome looking Van Sons gecko just out in the rock cut. First time I've actually seen them at night, just out and about doing the thing. Really pretty looking gecko with these nice sort of white crossbars along the back. Yeah, pretty awesome. That was another hope for the night. Eugene just spotted... Sorry for the noise. Eugene just spotted the tip of this guy's blue tail just poking out. And that's the that's the juvenile rainbow skink. The juveniles often have these bluish tails, whereas the sub well, the subadults and the adult males have these bright sort of orange last sort of thirds of the body. Super cool. And there's a lot of the species across Europe and in the US that actually have similar sort of blue tails and I think across in South America too, so 
really nice to get hands on these guys and yeah, I'll grab some photographs. Of course, just let him go. Oh, just spotted a big Turner's gecko. Just busy doing his thing under this little rock overhang. Not gonna bother him, just leave him. We got a couple to get photographs. We'll keep on going. What is good? We are now on day two, just stopping in a little roadside spot. Some trash in the distance. There's a dam, some rivers and stuff down there. But yeah, we had a super successful night last night, which you would have seen in the last video. But yeah, it looks like an old abandoned structure or something. Tons of stuff to flip, so let's see what we're gonna get after. So once again, Davin's producing the goods. Under this little rock, we just caught this flat lizard. I think this is Platosaurus orientalis orientalis. Um, I'll have to double check. But I mean, the colors are really not coming up in this video, but this thing is electric blue with sort of green and a broad orange tail. This thing is absolutely incredible. Um, and I, it's a species I haven't seen before either. I'm just holding on to it because they quick as lightning. Don't lose them before photographs. But yeah, these things are absolutely beautiful. It's another lifer for the trip. Three lifers so far. So far, so good. But we are going to grab some photos of this incredible thing. Let it go. Carry on hoping the guys are frothing to go see if we can't find some green snakes down by the Soul River. Cool, Devin just flipped the first herp of the day. A little distanti scandagama. There are the guys just getting stuck into all this trash on the floor. Um, yeah. Nice to add another one to the list, and not something I see all that often, although they, they are pretty common. But yeah, hopefully we're going to get after a good couple more finds at this spot. Let's see what else the guys are getting up to. I just flipped this rock and I just spotted this little tail hanging out here. If I can get this grass out the way. Have a look at that. That is the tail of our good friend Scalodes Myris, which is the Montane dwarf barring skink. I'm just gonna put my phone down and just dig him out because otherwise he's gonna kick down out of here. But yeah, let me grab him quick and I'll give that's you guys a bit of look. Bit. Yeah, that's just um, Scalodes Myris. Yeah, we did get one two days ago, so nothing too special, not a new species for the trip, but always nice to see. I'm just gonna put him on the rock here, give you guys a quick better look at him. You'll see how they sort of scoot over these rocks like little crazy things. Um, and yeah, Scalodes Myris. I'm just gonna let him go. There's a big rock under here, you can go. See you later. So I don't know how good the audio is gonna be, but we're just still walking along this river, this sort of waterline edge, looking for green snakes. But I mean, have a look at this habitat, it's just epic. Waterfall, river, super clean water. Oh, what a great spot. But yeah, no snakes yet, just loads of lizards. But, like I said earlier, it suits me just fine. Just sitting yeah, through the grass so here. A nice flap neck medium. Well, he's very agitated than orange. So these guys are usually green out here. The drier regions, they sort of brown. Oh, he's super upset. But yeah, awesome. So Eugene just poked in the cracks here. Massive rainbow skink. Um, really common. You see it's got a bit of that electric blue on the tails there. But yeah, this guy's an absolute unit of a skink, so hopefully I'll make for a couple nice photographs. But no snakes so far. The guys are itching for snakes, but I'm super chuffed just to keep on keeping on with these lizards. They're just epic. Just got a bit of orange on the throat there. The males are typically, they don't have these sort of those lateral stripes in there, or the blue tail, they're just completely like a rusty orangey red. So I hope you'll bump into some of those and I can show what the males look like. Cool. Have a go at this, we've been at this spot for about a couple of minutes. we just got our first Transvaal Dwarf Chameleon, Protopodium Transvalense. These guys are super cool, we're right in the middle of a really small town. I just got this on a, on a roadside on an exotic tree, of all things. I don't know why he's closing his eyes, brother. Yeah, these guys are pretty nice. It's quite overcast and dismal, so his colors aren't really coming out, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, super awesome to see these guys so quickly. 
we are going to, well, I'm gonna snap a couple of photographs quick. Just let him go. I mean, it's actually starting to drizzle and rain a bit, so I was quite surprised to see this guy out in a move. Yeah, this is the Transvaal Dorf Chameleon. Cool, we just started road cruising and shining cuts, and we just got another variegated wolf snake. We haven't even touched him yet, this is obviously in situ, but you can see him just cruising around, slowly looking for cracks to go in there, looking for little guys. These guys are fizzing, we're super stoked. Good job, we're going to grab a couple of photos of this dude quick, and carry on cruising. This is not even... From not, probably not even 10 meters away where we got the one yesterday. Super, super stoked. We just spotted this little red toe just on the rock face here. He's chilling out by a bunch of termites, so I'm presuming he's trying to eat them, but I'm hoping that he would get out. Oh, spooked him. But yeah, we've seen a lot of these over the last day or so, so I'm not going to mess with them. But yeah, I was just hoping he'd eat one of them. But no such luck. We're going to carry on. But funnily enough, right next to the red zone, it's a bunch of chains just in a rock cut. Super weird. Yeah. There the red zone goes. See you later, brother. We're just still cruising along this rock wall. And there is our good friend and savior, the Turner's Gecko. Oh, there's another one. Hold on. We oh, got another Turner's Gecko just down there. Oh, he's got a bit of a, I hope you guys can see. Got a bit of a damaged face the other been in a spat with uh another bit runs gecko which is highly likely these guys are quite aggressive towards one another you can see he's also got a a rigor and tail but yeah he's got quite a nasty little gash on his face there but yeah these are pretty much the most common gecko we're seeing out on the cliffs um a nice big geckos but yeah we're gonna carry on um the night, we still got a couple of hours left before sort of curfew and before we got to get back. Yeah, it just started to drizzle a little bit, so hopefully some more snakes come out. But I will check in with you guys if we see something else. So we've just been walking along a rock face, heading our way back. Everyone, well not everyone, two of the guys that just pretty much would have walked right over this little dude. I thought it was a snake originally, but it's a sort of a really small giant legless skink. Really, really dark, but if these guys are out of the ground moving, it's probably a good sign that we might bump into something else. Cool, we just got our second snake for the night. This is a little East African shovel snake. You can see his little yellow snoot with these white lines all the way down the body. It's a really tiny one, you can see size reference wise. But yeah, it's a nice new species for the trip so far. And I think everyone here has seen one, but yeah, you can see, get close up on that little yellow nose. Oh, they're quite cute. But yeah, we need to get some photos and he can just carry on looking for his gecko eggs along the way here. What is up? What is going on? It is day two, day three, sort of losing track of it. But we've made a tactical reassessment and we drove about we're about an hour away from where we're staying and we sort of have entered this sort of bush felt habitat um, which is incredibly difficult to actively herp like this during the day so I'm not expecting many great finds or results here but I'm already gonna sort of do a lot of road cruising and, and cut shining tonight but we thought while well, we're out here we may as well give it a go but it's incredibly hot, um, super dry, rocky. So, I mean, it's not in this habitat. You can't go flipping rocks. It's just way too hot. But yeah, we are going to see what we're getting after. And when we find something, I'll check in. Just opened the security box, well, electricity box. There's a big Tanner's gecko buzzing around here. It's so hot. So I don't think we're going to find much here. But we've seen a lot of these Turner's geckos, so not bothering with him too much. Just gonna close it up and let him carry on hanging out in his little holiday house. Jeez. Cruised on this mamba that's just been hit. It's got a decent size on but he's yeah, he's finished. You can see his head's sort of get 
cool. So here's just a brown house snake. There we go to the next spot. Um, you can see there's distinct white stripes on the side of the head, which pretty much tell tell sign for the brown house snake. But yeah, we're going to carry on and see what else we can turn up here. It's about quite a mellow day. Um, we just caught a couple of lizards, a couple of skinks down at one of the spots we were staying at. And just headed now to a place called Hoodsprayt. Went in and saw my buddy Chris at the Hoodsprayt Reptile Centre. And yeah, just um, walking back to the car because I didn't have a bag. But in here is a Sundaval's Rithering Skink. I'm just gonna walk back to the car with him in this jar just so I can get some quick photos. I didn't bring my camera into the felt, wasn't expecting to see much. But yeah, we got two herald snakes, which you would have seen in the clip just now that Devin and Eugene flipped. But yeah, now the guys are heading out, so I gotta go see what the commotion's all about. So it took me a little while to get hands on this guy. He was going from rock to rock, grass to grass. Um, this is a really good looking Cinderval's Rathering skin. You can actually see he's got these tiny little forelimbs, um, these big eyes, pretty shiny smooth scales. Um, a large infosorial skink that just spent most of the time buzzing around in this really fine, loose, sandy soil. Um, yeah, going to snap a couple of photos of this guy and I'm going to carry on and get going. So we're just out doing a bit of road cruising. And this is the third snake of the night. They've unfortunately been all DORs. This is just another dead herald snake, unfortunately. Um, you can see we've seen a couple of these this trip. Little redhead, but he's really dead, so just log them quick. And so we'll just stop for our second snake of the night. Uh, this is a dead pup, but it's still wriggling around. Um, I'll see if we can give it a flip over and see what he looks like on the other side. Yeah, they're not the prettiest looking puffeters in the country from up here. But yeah, he's sadly he's gone. But I'll get a record and we'll give him a We just got off to that dead puffetta. We got a live puffetta. He's pretty much, he's actually a little bit nicer than the other one. Yeah, a relatively small one. Yeah, we're just gonna grab some photos of him and carry on now. Awesome. What a bummer, we just stopped for yet another DOR of the night. Uh, it's just a nice, uh, really light colored brown house snake. Um, quite a common snake in the pet trade. But unfortunately this guy's done. We're just going to toss him in the grass. Sorry brethren. And we're going to carry on cruising. Oh, this is just tragic. This is a dead snouted night at a um, pretty average size one for the species. But absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, to see these guys. It's a really special special find and always something we want to see out here. So we can toss this guy off the road, carry on cruising. Holy crap. We just stopped for this we just stopped at this for this deer ass snake and it is a dead fast snake. Pretty much everyone on the trip has just been the goal species to find. Um, this is obviously hit way earlier in the day, if not yesterday, because it's pretty dried out and dead. But that is a really big file snake. Um, such a bummer, as you can see, this road is pretty busy. But yeah, that's an absolute crying shame to see such a magnificent species just being destroyed by some ants on the side of the road. Anyway, we're going to keep cruising and see what else we can turn up. Just stopped for our second live snake of the night and I'm absolutely losing it a little bit. It's a average size snout tonight at a... You can see he's got that really cute little upturned snout. But it's on semen. They're really nice dorsal markings. And yeah, super stoked. That's pretty much the coolest snake we've seen tonight. Okay, bag him up quickly. To swim on the side of the road and shoot some photos. Good morning. It is now the next day. After all that road cruising, snout at night at a uh, loads of dead, um, loads of dead herald snakes and a bunch of other sort of cool herps. We're just back at the place we're staying. I'm just taking a quick walk around them this morning before it gets super hot. Um, it's already probably close to you. 30 degrees and it's barely just gone eight o'clock. So I think it's gonna be a bit of a scorcher today, which 
may put a damper on actively searching for herbs till the evening but we have quite a lot of things to look out for around camp here photograph a couple of snakes and some lizards and hopefully some more flat lizards but yeah i'm gonna just take a little walk put a long loop back to the camp and if i see anything you guys will be the first to know about it it's got this yellow throated plate lizard um we're just gonna let him go snapped a couple photos and you see how they scream through the grass there you go brethren there he is just poking through so just walking along this rock wall looking for some this is a photograph there is a big shed it looks pretty fresh considering how hot it is here and it's still in one piece that's probably just from a big western style green snake you can see just on this little culvert here there's a little stream that runs through it's got all these all this vegetation sticking over tons of cracks and fissures along the rock wall here with obviously the vegetation coming through but yeah i'm actually just on a mission to photograph some of these flat lizards and rainbow skinks if they'll cooperate but yeah it's absolutely cooking now in the sun so i think most of these guys are going to be sort of poking around in the shade but got my telephoto on the camera so let's see if we can't meet up with any of them well have a go at this I was just walking a bit out of breath. I had to drop my camera gear to catch us. I was just walking along this canal and I just got this absolute beaut of a Western Natal green sink just right here in the resort that we're staying at. He was just along that little fence line there and he was just about to go into this, um, fall down into this canal in this drainage ditch. But managed to get quick hands on him. He's bit me to pieces. My other hand is leaking heck of a lot of coolant, as we like to say. But this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Frothing. Um, it actually feels gravity. It feels quite heavy um, towards the, the back end there with eggs or something like that. But yeah, super chuffed. I just had to throw, <laughs> throw my other camera on the floor. I was busy photographing um, flat lizards. But yeah, the guys back at camp are going to be fizzing to see this thing. Yeah, Western Natal green snake. This is just that big Western Natal green snake that I got on this pretty gross little alleyway sort of runoff here. Got some photos, just gonna let it go. Let it go back into this hole where he was hanging out in. If I don't fall in here. Come on, brother. It's always important to release things where they go and when you do, put them somewhere where they can hang out a bit till they come out and feel comfortable to Go catch some more skins. Go. We just cruised this Mozambique spitting cobra. Um, a car was coming, so we just had to scream it off the road, but I've just got it here by the tail. Um, decent size one. It's probably about uh, just shy of a meter or so. Not the biggest boy ever, but you can see he's got a really big head on him. But we're going to bag him quickly, um, and then we're just going to actually shoot photos of this guy tomorrow. And then we'll obviously just bring him back here and just release him where he should be. But yeah, we're going to just quickly sort him out here at least we could save him from getting smashed by a car but yeah this is the Mozambique spitting cobra one of the snakes responsible for the most bites oh, sorry. no worries most bites and people cool we're just gonna bag him and then we're gonna carry on we just stopped for another deer I just after we picked up the cobra and that is another intermediate shield nose which was in here when we did the first pass this guy's pretty mangled though. What a bummer. Also looks like a male. Get that long tail. Shame. It's that rostral scale. So I'm just gonna log. Oh, we just cruise this house snake who's in the last stages of life, unfortunately. It's the first one we've seen. Oh, what's an eye? You can see they're quite nice and pale, nice pale reds. But yeah, he's obviously just been swiped. So I'm just gonna chuck him off and Get out. Just pulled up to stop. Um, I think the guys are already here. Yeah, it's just a little puffer that's super, super bleak. Okay. You can see when they go, stop moving, arching their neck like that, they just are ready to destroy. Um, yeah, he's super, super angry. We're just gonna shuffle him off the road here, real quick. Give you a better look at him quick. He's got that long tail. You can see it's obviously a juvenile male. You see, typical puff is they move in that concertina motion. They don't zigzag like most of the other snakes. You can see he's just going to be escorted off the other road in a little minute. 
And he's gonna go in and do his thing. You can see it just comes in on the car. See how these guys just get destroyed on this road. Going back. Got the Tweezy boys. They're going Tweezy and Foam at the same time. There he goes. Just rolled up to our next snake of the night and yet another puffer. This one's actually really nice. Um, another little male, you can see how long that tail is. But as you can hear, the wind is pumping and it's just starting to rain a little bit, which is generally pretty good for snakes to rain anyway, but not so much the wind. Yeah, this guy's gorgeous. This is the third one of tonight. We are going to carry on because the rain is coming and the wind is howling. A minute after we got that puffetter, we just squeezed a nice egg eater. Better than the one we squeezed yesterday in terms of size. Nice colors, nice and brown. But yeah, it's terrible and windy, but the snakes seem to be still cruising around. Awesome. Let's go. So the eyes are freezing. We just got a pretty small python, South American python, just out here on the road. Better look at the door somewhere. But yeah, as you can hear, it's super windy and the conditions are pretty bad. So this guy was still on the move and he's just going right under me. But when they smell like this, they're usually pretty chill, so nothing to worry about. But you can see he's just cruising along here. You can see how small his head is in relation to the body. When they're small like this, they eat a lot of birds and small mammals, so they don't grow too quickly. As soon as I touch them, I'm just gonna grab a couple pictures quick and we're gonna get. You can see, I was just trying to get this guy off the road. There's a car busy coming there. Um, so I try to grab him and he's just wrapped right around my arm, so it's a bit of a pain. I don't know how much you can be able to hear, it's so windy and the car is obviously going, but this is super cool. And you can see, if we hadn't come along, that car would have smashed him. So we're just gonna bag this guy up and get some pictures and let him go. So we just finished up packing up the campsite, we're starting to make our way home, just came across probably our last hit for the trip, um, this is just a relatively small Mozambique spitting cobra, much smaller than the big guy we saw last night, so thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.